Are you looking for a sound quality based inexpensive mini amplifier? Today we're going to look at the Fosi Audio ZA3. This amplifier was sent to me for review, however, there was no input by Fosi Audio for the outcome. They wanted me to provide my review, show it to you guys, and let you know what I think. So that's what I'm going to do. First off, you'll see that we have the owner's manual here, several different languages. There's also a PDF version available online. Also, we have the US power cord, and we have the 48 volt, 5 amp, 240 watt power supply included with this one. And here we have the amplifier itself. Nice and snazzy. Let's take a closer look at the functions. On the far left, we have a switch for XLR or RCA for your inputs. Also have a very small power LED, have a nice big power slash volume control. Also another switch on the right side for stereo or mono. Flipping the mini amp around, you can tell we got a lot going on here, including these audiophile grade XLR slash TRS inputs for balanced connections into this amplifier. Proof that Fosse Audio is listening to the pinkies in the sky audiophile, such as this one. A true audiophile will never look at TRS or even RC connectors, as only balanced connection, especially XLR, preserves the signal. Pardon me, would you have any gray poupon? But of course. For those who can accept lowly RCA inputs, those are also provided here for left and right. In addition, the subwoofer output, this is a variable subwoofer output with a 300 hertz low pass. Also binding posts for connecting up your speakers. These are also configured so you can have access to mono output. Not really bridging, but we'll get to that later. Single banana plugs are compatible. However, you cannot use the dual banana plugs because in some countries these work in electrical outlets. And it's possible Fosse is trying to keep you from this happening. On the far right, there is a 12 volt trigger in and out. This is for a 3.5 millimeter connection between multiple units. Also below that, the DC power input, 48 volt is recommended and what's included with this amp. As far as dimensions go, 7.2 inches for the depth, 6.1 inches for the width, and two inches for the height. Obviously, if you use banana plugs, you will need to adjust the depth, add a few more inches to that measurement we provided. At current time of the video, the amp listed for $149 on Amazon. Check link in the video description for current pricing. Only two ratings provided with a 48 volt power supply, 155 watts times two at four ohms, or 235 watts mono at four ohms. Now we love to test amplifiers here using our amplifier dyno so we can find out how much true output power these amplifiers have. In this case, on the left, you'll see the power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right, the voltage of the dyno, but we are powering the dyno with a separate power supply, so you can just ignore that in this case. First set of tests will be the stereo mode. Let's try eight ohms, where there are no ratings provided with the amp at eight ohms, two channels. Let's try it out and see what we get. We are using a one kilohertz test track. Certified test takes us up to 1% total harmonic distortion. There you can see 94 and 97 watts per channel. So about 95 or so average per channel, that's pretty good. Uncertified takes us up to the clipping point, so it should show a little bit more than the certified test. See if we can get 100 watts. Oh, right at it, there you go, keeps counting. 107 and 105 at eight ohms, uncertified to clipping. Next up, we'll do the dynamic test, which includes an IHF 202 certified track for dynamic power, which sends a pulse track at one kilohertz into the amplifier. And here you can see 113 to 115 watts. Next up, we'll try four ohms at two channel. This is rated 155 watts by two at 1% distortion at one kilohertz. And that's actually what we're testing here certified. So see if we can get that 155. And yeah, we get a little bit more. 177 and 174, very impressive. Next up, we'll try uncertified to clipping. See if we can even better that 177. And we do a little bit. 187 and 183. What about the dynamic test, again, which sends the IHF 202 certified track for dynamic power. Can we possibly get close to 200 watts? And yeah, it's right there at it. Check that out. 193, nope, 196 and 204. Now what about two ohms, two channel? The chip is rated to handle two ohms, but the amp is not rated at it. So let's try it out and see what we get. Certified test first. You can see it kind of stopped at about 130 watts. It jumped again to 160. I think it's because the amp cycled off and back on. 
due to some kind of protection circuit. Uh, uncertified up to clipping. We did get, look at this, close to 200, 198 and 187. So that's crazy power from this mini amp. It's also crazy that it can actually run two ohms. One last test at two ohm stereo. We'll try the dynamic test. <laughs> We're getting up there, my friends. Look at this. Over 290 watts per channel. Crazy. Next up, we'll try the amp in mono mode. I thought it was actually bridging the amplifier, but appears not, as we will see here in the output numbers. Eight ohms, no ratings are provided. Let's try certified test, one kilohertz, and we get 106 watts. So it's definitely not bridging the amplifier to give us double the power output here. Seems to be just running one channel. Let's try uncertified up to clipping at eight ohms, mono, 108 watts. There you go, that's it. Let's try the dynamic test at eight ohms. See if we can get any more juice. 110, 119, does it can go up any more? Nope, I think that's it. 119, eight ohms, mono. Next up, let's try four ohms mono. This is where it's rated 235 watts. So let's try it out with that one kilohertz track. Certified 1% distortion up first. Can we get the 235? No, a little shy, 193 at four ohms, certified to 1% distortion. What about up to the clipping point? Can we get the 235 watts there? Let's try it, one kilohertz track. Here we go. Oh no, we're still a little shy. It's trying, <laughs> getting close, but 214 is the best we could get uncertified to clipping. Surely dynamic, we can get the 235 watts or not. 209, 210, I think that's as much as we're getting. 210 at four ohms mono. Now here are all the results of all the tests I just showed you. All the stereo tests are here, eight ohms, four ohms, and two ohms. Also we have the mono results shown here. And yeah, we got a little shy there on the four ohms mono. Now, before you guys even say anything, I can read your minds. Right now in the comments, you're already typing it. Look, we're seeing over 500 watts. This is only a 240 watt power supply. What gives? No way. I've shown a video before. I'll leave a link in the video description where I've proven why this works, how it works, etc. So make sure you check that link so you can understand what's up. Now for the sound demo portion, we spared no expense with the Sony XA7ES audiophile grade CD player, which includes the balanced outputs via XLR connections for the best possible sound quality going into this mini amp. Now FOSI was kind enough to send two of these units so we could actually try this in this dual mono mode. So that's how we hooked it up. We'll show you how we got everything connected. Now it's very unfortunate that the amplifier here on the top would not power on and I wasn't able to do this dual mono mode so it had some kind of an issue with it which was really a bummer because I wanted to try this out in dual mono but what we did is we just disconnected the one amp went back to the single amplifier and that's how we're going to do all the demos here was just with one of these ZA3s which I think as you'll see here actually worked out pretty well. Now I did play a lot of sound quality bass tracks that I cannot play over YouTube unfortunately. So I had to pull out some of my royalty free and YouTube music so that you guys can hear it. But of course, over compression, over YouTube, you're not gonna be able to get the full experience. But I'm gonna play it back anyway. Hopefully you can give you some idea of how good this amp sounds. Let's fire it up.
guys know I don't typically like to talk sound quality because it is subjective, but I would say here I love the sound quality. I like to listen to it for a long time and that tells me that the sound quality is really good. So overall I was impressed. Next up we're going to open up this ZA3 amplifier by taking off the volume knob on the front, taking off this little nut here which is behind the potentiometer. Then we're going to take off a few screws and we're going to pull it apart so you can take a closer look. Here once we get inside you can see on the board Fossi Audio ZA3 version 0.4 made in October of 2023. Here's the board with all the components including the German WEMA capacitors, Japanese NCC filter cap, 63 volt 2200 microfarad, Sumida audio inductors, Elna coupling capacitors, and replaceable op amps. We'll get to that in a minute. This one includes a TPA 3255 by Texas Instruments amplifier chip my favorite at the time of this video. In addition, this amplifier includes five replaceable or upgradable op amps. They're any 5532s, which are included. And you can see there's two, one for each left and right RCA channel, two for the sub channel, and one for the XLR channel. It's kind of weird there's not two for XLR and one for sub. Of course, if you're a pinkies in the sky audiophile, you want to swap out your op amps because you can really tell the difference and that's up to you and just make sure you don't bend the legs or you're not gonna be able to reuse them. So be real careful and you're welcome to swap out these op amps until your ears are happy. Next up, let's talk pros and cons. Things I like, things you should be aware of, things I like are the big power, small size, great sound quality, over 100 dB signal noise ratio. It was dead silent on my bench. It sounded amazing. The subwoofer output in this one is variable with the volume. Thank you, Fossey, for listening. XLR, TRS, and RCA inputs. The speaker binding posts work well, and the op amps are replaceable or rollable if you want to do that. Things to be aware of, it does not have a remote. There's no headphone jack. There is no USB for high-res audio. And the mono mode does not bridge the amplifier chip. It seems to just be using one of the channels, so it gives you more flexibility with the 240 watt power supply to utilize that out of just a single channel instead of two. So there you have it, my review, Fossi Audio ZA3. This is one of the best, if not the best, mini amp at the time of this video. Absolutely incredible sounding and all the features that most people want. Thanks as always for watching. Until next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Thank you.